picture plant. Can you see it? It's beautiful. It's really big, a wonderful red colour. And if you peer inside, it's got liquid to about this level. Now this plant's beautiful, but it's also got a sinister side because this is a death trap for insects and even small mammals. Although it looks green and lush up here, the soil is very poor and devoid of life-sustaining nutrients. For many plants, that would be a big problem, but not for the pitcher. It's evolved a cunning liquid solution. What looks innocent enough, like a pool of water within the plant, is actually full of digestive enzymes and acids. They're not exactly the same as what we've got, but similar to the kind of chemicals we have in our stomach and our intestines to digest our food. Now this plant does it on the outside. Any passing insect that falls into the plant will find it impossible to climb out again and will slowly be digested by the corrosive broth inside. The biggest examples can hold three and a half litres of liquid and they don't just digest insects. If you have an inquisitive mouse that's daft enough to fall in there, it'll digest that too. When this plant catches prey, it's actually the wriggling of the prey and the struggling as it tries to climb up the surface which triggers the pitcher plant to release enzymes to digest whatever's just fallen in. Now, I wouldn't fancy being stuck in there, but that's one smart eating machine. The joy of my job is that sometimes you find something without even knowing you were looking for it. Oh, man. Oh, yes. This is so cool. Look at that. It's a stag beetle. Can you see this? It's got to be one of the most photogenic little creatures in the jungle. It's gorgeous. And if you look underneath, look at those colours. Beautiful, subtle sort of purple and crimson and on its head as well. And you can see these guys are called stag beetles, and I know it's a guy because of them, because of these antler-like appendages. These mandibles or jaw parts here give the stag beetle its name because they look so much like antlers, and they're primarily used to fight other males. But the problem comes if you try picking one of these up, it can give you a very painful nip and can actually draw blood. Also, <clears throat> if, like me, you're handling it more or less properly down here, it's also got some nasty little barbs on its legs which stick into your fingers. They're a bit spiky. So if you happen to see one of these when you're trekking through the jungle and you want a photo, which is understandable, move yourself around the beetle. Don't even think about moving the beetle around you. It's not just the animal kingdom that can be weird, exotic and bad for your health here in Borneo. I've been tipped off about the rarest and wackiest plant you'll ever see. It's also one of the most evil-smelling plants in the world. Because it attracts some filthy company, I've been warned not to hang around it for too long. Now, there we go. There we go. Oh, my word. Now, this is the Raphalesia. And strange as it looks, it's actually the largest flower in the world. You, you could be forgiven for thinking it isn't a flower at all. I mean, to me, it looks like some alien being has just dropped here. But it is strangely impressive. Look at that. It's almost impossible to describe. I'm lost for words. It's, it's warty. It's completely unflower-like. These plants rot away within days of flowering and their natural habitat's in decline, so I'm really lucky to find this, I guess. This thing is incredibly weird looking, but it's also pretty nasty smelling. <laughs> it's difficult to describe the smell, but um, it's like sort of maggoty, rotten flesh. The reason why it smells so bad is pretty much the same reason any other flower smells good. It's to attract pollinators. And if you're looking at roses or a colourful cottage garden, you think bumblebees or butterflies. But here, the pollinator is nowhere near as attractive. It's the latrine fly, and that name should give you a pretty good idea of what it likes to feed on. Feces and rotten flesh. 
While the Rafflesia plant itself is no threat to us, the flies it attracts with its putrid smell are. If the bacteria and disease they carry get into your mouth and into your digestive system, you're going to get really sick. So, if you stumble upon one of these very rare plants, keep your mouth shut and set up your picnic elsewhere. Normally on these hunts for killer bugs, I'm the one having to keep a constant lookout against harm or infection. But I'm about to meet some close relatives whose number one threat could be me. So it's important I have a medical checkup before getting the all clear for my visit. Let me check how's your, how's your lungs, yeah? Okay. Okay. The reason why the doctor's listening to my chest is to make sure that I've got no infectious lung diseases because some animals are very vulnerable to human illnesses and we can't risk that if we're going to film them. All right, sir. Cool, so my heart's still beating and my lungs are still breathing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Your lungs are very clear. Yeah. So that's it? That's about it. Yeah. Wonderful. Clean bill of health. And that's all very good news because I can't wait to meet the staff and inhabitants of this very special clinic. As technology advances, it's easy to think that we're head and shoulders above the rest of the animal kingdom. But there's one creature that's guaranteed to bring you back down to earth. And one of the last places you can see them is right here in Borneo. This is an orangutan. And you can see, it looks very human. The name literally means man of the forest, because in Malay, orang means man. It's got nothing to do with the orange colour. These two are just kids. They're only five years old, and you can see they're really enjoying playtime. But an adult male can weigh the same as me, around 200 pounds, 85 kilos, and they just look so human. And that's hardly surprising because they share 97% of their genetic makeup with me or you. Hello. <laughs> he wants my shirt. The shirt off my back. Can I have my shirt back, please? Thank you. They're strong as well. That had one hell of a grip. And I suppose they should because, you know, if they can't grip properly, it could easily be the end of them. Sadly, orangutan populations in the wild have crashed over recent decades, largely due to loss of habitat to palm oil plantations, logging and human expansion. And that's a tragedy when you consider how intelligent these creatures are. In the wild, they're known to use tools as umbrellas, to catch insects or as a fly swap. Whee! And it wasn't that long ago that tool use was supposed to be an exclusively human attribute. The 60 to 80 orangutans here were found sick in the wild or were illegally captured and kept as pets. They've become very rare, so it's especially important that they're kept safe and in good health. But the greatest threat to that is, you guessed it, us. Who's this little girl? Okay, this is Chinta. Uh, she is mm. two years old. Yeah. Oh, and we cute. are going to do the routine medical checkup today. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, let's start, baby. Come. Vet mm. Cecilia Bocklin is on a constant okay. lookout for diseases her babies can catch from us cholera, typhoid, hepatitis, malaria, and tuberculosis. Even after my checkup, I'm under strict orders not to touch them. What are you checking for there? Now we routinely do our uh, TB testing once a year. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that they're all clear of tuberculosis. OK, I'm actually hearing the lung sound, the uh -huh. breathing sound, basically, to check if it's normal. Or um, if there's fluid in the lungs, I will be worried about that. Sure. Yeah, so she's clear. OK, you're good. So she's bright and alert, very good body condition. Mm. And she can go for play. It's been a real privilege meeting the orangutans, even if one of them did want to take over the camera work. Very few of the other creatures I've found here have been so friendly. But one thing's for certain, when it comes to wild bugs, beasties and plant life, Borneo's full to brim.